I have a really distinct memory of the first time I saw Kiki's Delivery Service, which is a great movie, and since you like my channel, obviously you have great taste and I'm sure that you'll love it, but that's beside the point. It was a lazy Sunday afternoon. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and if you listened closely, you could hear the distant sound of someone wasting their time mowing their lawn. I should have been completely relaxed and enjoying life, but there was just one problem. I had an essay due Monday. The weekend was drawing to a close and my stress level was rising, so I did what any reasonable person would do in a situation like that. I grabbed my backpack, and moved it off the couch so I could sit down and watch TV. Instead of confronting the thing that was stressing me out, I distracted myself with whatever was playing. As I watched the movie, I got progressively more stressed out. I'm burning daylight, why don't I just go get it done? I became unbearably uncomfortable, with a lump in my throat and tension in every muscle. No matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't relax. The longer I waited, the more I was paralyzed by stress, and the more I needed to focus on something else to try and stop myself from freaking out. From the outside, I was just watching a movie. Intently. Now this was a long time ago, so I don't actually remember if I got that essay done on time, but knowing me, probably not. I was a chronic procrastinator in school. Teachers always told me that I needed to manage my time better, schedule specific times to do things, set deadlines. I tried. I really tried. But none of that advice ever helped, and all through high school I always ended up doing things last minute. So not only was I super stressed out all the time, I started to feel pretty crappy about myself. Like, dang, why can't I just get it together? After a while, you just feel like a failure. And I'm not the only one. There are so many videos about procrastination, and some of them even try to give advice. The problem is, so much of that advice is completely worthless. It usually boils down to what my teachers told me. You're just not managing your time effectively. What if I told you that procrastination wasn't about managing time at all? Procrastination is about managing... emotions. <laughs> uh, uh, hold on. Oh my god. I just... I'm so sorry. I just blew my mind. <laughs> okay, I know that might sound a little wild at first, but I promise it's true. When I think back to every time that I've procrastinated, it's been something pretty important. And the funny thing is, the more important it is, the more I care about doing a good job, and the more likely I've been to put it off. What's really happening is that the more important something is, the more afraid I am of messing it up, and you can't mess something up if you're not doing it. So the more I wait, the less time I have to work, which means I'm even less likely to do a good job. Do you see? Do you see the vicious cycle? It's all there. <laughs> But it's not always a fear of failure. Sometimes it's just a lack of clarity. When you've got a big project to do, the first step isn't always obvious. So there's lots of uncertainty looming over you. In that case, it's really a fear of the unknown that's stopping you. In either case, there's a strong emotion that's demanding to be dealt with, and the way I think a lot of people deal with it is to distract themselves. It's so much easier to just do something comfortable, like watch Kiki's delivery service. Another one of my favorite strategies is something I like to call lie to myself. Which is a pretty neat trick. Watch this. Let's say that it's Friday after school. I have a big project due on Monday, but I just worked hard all day and I don't really have the energy to work on it right now. I'll get started tomorrow. See what I did there? I lied to myself. I was kind of stressed about the project and naturally I needed to manage that emotion, so I made something resembling a plan. That made me feel like I was in control and it reduced my stress. Mission accomplished. But like, I don't... I have a history of making effective plans for the future, and the next morning my friend is gonna call me and we're gonna go climb on some rooftops downtown. I should know by now that my plans will not survive a call from Gary. A better plan would have accounted for that. So to recap, most people think that procrastination is about managing time when it's actually about managing your emotions. This leads to putting effort into fixing the wrong things and getting nowhere. Meanwhile, they manage their emotions with ineffective strategies like distraction. Things don't improve and the cycle repeats itself. Now that we know what the real problem is, let's talk about how to deal with it. Managing your emotions effectively is something that probably takes a lifetime to master, so don't beat yourself up when you fail. It's still gonna happen, and that's okay. I think the first step to stopping procrastination is just to recognize when you're distracting yourself. Which is surprisingly hard, because the whole point of distracting yourself is to stop thinking about the thing that you're supposed to be thinking about. But every now and again, while you're watching a video or playing a game, you might have a moment of realization. Wow, I should really get to work. In that moment, you have two options. Either you can say, maybe just one more video, or you can close the tab and actually get to work. If you choose to continue to distract yourself, who knows how long it'll be until you have another chance to break free. Those moments are incredibly important, and if you wanna stop procrastinating, that's when it needs to happen. We all know how often one more video has turned into five and then 10 more, so take it from me. Don't lie to yourself. There's no such thing as just one more. And if you can do that, you're halfway there. Once you've stopped distracting yourself, you might notice that you're pretty anxious about whatever it is you need to do. And if you're anything like me, you'll reflexively reach for some other distraction. But you don't need to. Just take a moment and breathe. Anxiety isn't fun, but distracting yourself just delays it. To make it go away, you need to do something to gain control. 
Take a moment to think about what specifically needs to be done and break it down into small pieces. If you can put together a really clear plan of action, some of that anxiety might start to fade. You might still be intimidated by the idea of getting started. So maybe step one is just to get your notebook out. That's it, you don't need to write anything. But maybe, once you realize that wasn't so bad, you could open the notebook. Once you have a plan, don't think about the future. Don't worry about all the steps to come, just focus on the present moment. What do you need to do this very second? Nothing else exists. Clear your mind and pick up the pen.